watch any video or read any article about the future of the economy right now and you're going to hear words like downturn, recession, maybe even depression. And no wonder with everything that's happening in the world right now and over the last few months. So if you're a leader staring at this bleak future, you will want to know what you can do to help lead your organization out of this, through this, in one piece and set up for success. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gillian Sheeran. I am the Chief Financial Officer at PriceFX. I have been working in the finance industry for over 20 years and I've been operating as a CFO for over 10 years. In various different industries, I've helped turn a company around. I've helped an organization get through the global financial crisis as well. So here are some lessons that I've learned managing a business through the global financial crisis and also leading a turnaround. First of all, I'll begin by explaining my usual approach that I take with a business. And that is the three Ps, people, product, and profit. This isn't mine. It was first declared by um, a venture, a very successful venture capitalist in the States. And he used it when he was investing in organizations. And I use it when I join an organization. It works like this. First, you check who your people are, that you have the right people in the right job motivated in the right way. That doesn't mean everyone's singing Kambaya. It just means that you have targeted your people skills, your people's personalities and the role properly. Then you have a sharp look at the product. Now, if you've got the right people in the right role, working in the right way, they assist you with that product. They assist you with the tech side. They assist you with the go to market. Once you've got the people and the product on the right tracks, Profit kind of falls out of that naturally. And so normally you can deal with this more or less consecutively. In a turnaround situation, I had to deal with it concurrently. What I've learned when things are bad, really, really bad, is actually the misery exacerbates the situation and it exacerbates any cracks that you had in the system, any fissures in relationships. Suddenly, those fissures in relationships are all out wars. The cracks, crack and your processes start to fail. And in a way, that's a good thing because it makes you deal with it. You can't avoid it. To get out of the situation, you have to amend those relationships and you have to fix the process. So it's a good thing. But there's another really good thing because you stand there and you view the entire organization and it's a fairly gray landscape at the time, but there is always gold glinting there in the desert. And you have to find that opportunity and you have to maximize it. You have to keep looking across. So for example, when I was in the turnaround situation, we found that our sales staff were selling to a client. They were selling high volume, but when I say low margin, I mean negative margin. And it was very obvious. And it was very obvious that another client was contributing much more to our margin. So all we had to do was tweak the sales incentive plan and now our sales staff are selling to the right client and we're making margin. When things are bad, my advice is to be transparent with your employees. At least be transparent with a good cohort of them. Your employees are smart people, that's why you hired them. And you need to motivate them and engage them and get them to help you, and they will. When we were in that turnaround situation, we knew that the staff were suspicious of what was happening, and so we told the operational staff in the office that we were in dire straits, and they helped. They were the reason that we managed to turn the organization around in nine months because once we had told them what was happening they were then in control with us they came up with innovative new ideas on how to manage costs and how to cut costs and how to help us keep our momentum or gain a momentum and the only reason we managed it was because of them. No matter how well you work a redundancy program, you will always find that more people leave after you've made the redundancies. My entire career, I've seen this happen in so many situations. So if you have to do a redundancy program, make at least half the people redundant than you need to, because I guarantee you more people will leave afterwards. 
As a finance director or a CFO, you will find yourself at some point in a turnaround or in dark, difficult times, having to scrutinize discretionary spend. I would advise you to be very careful here and to not perform this task in isolation from the rest of the business. Because just because it's something you think doesn't add value or you think doesn't assist engagement, it doesn't mean that there are employees out there who really, really value it, need it, require it. The trick is to navigate these turbulent seas while keeping people on board, motivated, engaged, and helping you to come up with the ideas that will make your business a success long-term. Motivation leads to innovation. If you look at the big successful multinational organizations that exist today, like Microsoft, WhatsApp, Slack, Apple, they were all founded during a recession. During the recession, I worked as head of finance of a global financial newspaper. And when I look back now at 2020 hindsight, there were definitely things that were, were done during that period that could have been done better. And one of those things was directly linked to innovation. At the time of the crisis, we were a subsidiary of a massive organization and the message came down from the top that we could only run projects which were directly revenue generating, which immediately showed efficiencies. And what that did was it stifled all the innovation, all the fun, the benchmarks for investment shot up. And when we came through the crisis, the competitive landscape had completely changed and I really felt that we had missed a trick. Here is the big one. This is what I learned as a CFO in a turnaround. I was the person sitting there looking at every cost in the P&L and deciding which is necessary, which is discretionary. So now as we potentially enter a recession, a downturn, God forbid a depression, now I try to remember that person and think, how can I convince that CFO that our cost is directly linked to their productivity, to their profitability, to their value, to their efficiencies. And I believe that's gonna be really key as we go through the next six to nine months, is convincing the CFO of your customer that you drive value. Now you have some tips to help you navigate any potential economic downturn. You can think about communicating openly with your staff about cuts and potential redundancies, keeping your team motivated and innovative, and most importantly, selling based on the value you can drive to your customer's bottom line. It may seem like a lot to keep track of, but I suggest you re-watch and make note of the things that are most applicable to you and your organization. Believe me, it'll be worth it if you want to get out on the other side, hopefully better than you started. For more information about managing a downturn, check out our article about the eight strategies to manage inflation in the description below. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of The Pricing Channel. We make videos like this every week. If you found this helpful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road.